everything that you touch started in a machine shop. It started with somebody making the mold or making the die or making the punch that stamped it, forged it, formed it, poured it, cast it. But when you say the word machine shop, people think dirty, greasy, nasty, oily, dangerous. And then when they walk into a facility like ours, it doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Eli Plaskett with Modern Machine Shop. I'm here in Savannah, Georgia at Aerotech Machining. Here to learn about all the five axis, multitasking, and heavy automated machining they do here uh, for the aerospace industry. Let's take a look. So this is the, the three machine Palatech that I was telling you about. So there's three machines, 44 pallets, and a combined 400 tools. You can see the vastness of the Palatech from this view oh, right here. yeah, that's a great view. Is that the tool changer right there? Yes. Or those both are tool changers? All three are tool changers. Yeah. What machines are running on it, you said? So there's two I-800 Variaxis. They're actually I-800 Neo Variaxis. And those are five axis, right? Yes, they are. Um, and then there's an HCN 5000 horizontal. So basically you're making the plans, deciding which, which part can go to which machine, yes. both based off what the needs of the part and availability of the machine. Absolutely. We load the program into the machine, but then the pallet controller controls what programs to run when. And how many people can run all three machines? Do you need to run all three machines at once? Can you just talk a little bit about the background of, of the company, how it started, and, and how you first became involved? Machining's been in my family for, uh, for decades, and uh, it's all I ever wanted to do. I, I started the business in 1992 as a small uh, job shop facility, if you will, and, and all we did was conventional machining, more of the industrial side of things. And uh, as, as the company grew over the first five, six, seven years, you know, we purchased our first CNC lathe and, and that led to another one, which led to a mill, which led to larger mills. And uh, we kind of grew into or, or evolved into where we are today. But it was, it was very small and we did just about anything for anybody. Uh, did whatever we could to uh, to survive and get started. So the two FJVs I was telling you about, here they are, they're twins. So you can see we're running long linear parts over here. These parts are about eight foot long. Uh, they're sitting here on the table. This is what this machine's running right now through multiple operations. It's hard to see in the windows, but uh, there's, a, there's a rather large fixture in there that's running all three ops of this part. It's a progressive fixture. So you run op one, flip it to op two, flip it again for op three. Every time the door opens, you get a finished, a finished part. Oh wow! And so the fixtures flip it in there? No, we okay. we have to flip them. But each program's running an op one, an op two, and an op three. Oh great! You just progressively move the part. Can you think of a time, maybe not really early on, but at any point really, when you had your first real success, something that sticks out as like this was one of the the pivot points in in, in my company. Yeah, when we first when we first purchased uh, our first CNC machine tool, it, it was a game changer, uh, and we focused on purchasing a machine that happened to be based around automation. Yes, which CNC is, but we wanted something that was user friendly, quick to program, and we could pro write a program to make one part with it. And uh, we picked a certain machine tool brand. It served us very well, and we're very very loyal to them even to this day. So the Mazak 1400 I was telling you about is here. This is the 55 by 165 travels uh, profiler. You got some huge work envelopes here. Another 100 horsepower spindle and a 32 by 120 travels. This is just a baby brother to that one. Okay. Both of them are, are Vortexes. Our other Palatex system, one machine, 12 pallets. Mazak must love you guys. We're on the Christmas card list. <laughs>
So then we go into large turning. Uh, we have the largest Mazak turning center that they build here in North America, which is the uh, Quick Turn 500 MY with 160 inches between centers. What kind of parts are you turning on that? Ag. We make these shafts over here, uh, the shafts down there by the vortex. Failure for me was never an option. Yes, we saw some times when work got a little bit slow and you know things of that nature, but no, we've been on a steady growth path from day one. We had opportunities along the way to grow faster than what I was comfortable with growing. We chose to stay on a slow, steady path. It's worked for us. And when there is a downturn like 08 and 09, uh, COVID, uh, we've never had a layoff. So uh, apparently, not because I'm smarter than anybody else, but apparently the path that we chose worked for us. But it was slow, steady growth over a period of 33 years now. So as we progress down through multitasking on both sides, three integrexes back here, uh, four counting the large one I was telling you about. So this machine, we signed off on it yesterday. We've got the front platform missing. It's not here yet. It'll be here in two weeks. But it, it wraps around the front where you can get to the pallet changer. Uh, but it's a, a very large capacity uh, machine tool. 120 tools in the tool magazine. Obviously, there's nothing in there right now, but can we see in the working envelope? Absolutely. Come on up. There's one of the parts that we're going to be running on it. Right there? Yes. Does it have another uh, chuck? Yeah, so the mill, mill spindle's here. Yeah. B axis on the spindle, C axis on the table, and okay. then the pallet changer will run around and bring another one in. It's our part of our apprenticeship program right here too that I was telling you about. John's got an apprentice working with him teaching him the ins and outs of conventional machining. Is that, is that what you use all of the uh, manu uh, the traditional machines for, or do you yeah. also use them for production? We also use them for production, but we bought some new conventional machines. That's our newest one. That one just came in. So some people might ask, you know, with all these phenomenally expensive advanced CNC machines, why are you still purchasing a traditional machine like this? The one off that the CNC won't do. Uh, we just ran a shaft in this machine two weeks ago that was 22 foot long, eight inches in diameter. There's not a CNC in the building that'll do it. A CNC that size would probably be astronomical. Yeah, oh, yeah well over a million dollars. The thing that we learned early on was customer service and quality was everything. Uh, a lot of people own machine tools and a lot of people can run machine tools, but not a lot of people care anything about customer service. And they didn't 30 years ago. Uh, and today is even worse than that. But 30 years ago, the best way that we found to break into a new customer was uh, flood them with customer service. Whatever they needed, get it to them. And more importantly, get it to them when they needed it. Uh, equally as important as that, uh, getting it to them when they need it, but getting it to them correctly. That's difficult to do when you're very small, but that was a winning combination for us. And it has been even to this day. Was it a situation where you just happened to have the right people that were really great at customer service? Or was that more of a strategic uh, top-down decision that, that you just recognized it yourself? We have to be great at this. No, it was something that I recognized and the customer service department was, well, you're looking at him. <laughs> uh, I was the customer service. Back in those days, we did a lot of repair work and, and okay. repair work was based around customer service. Can you come pick it up? Can you fix it? Can you get it back to us in a day or two? So it sounds like you, you defaulted to yes and just made it happen. There was no other answer but yes. <laughs> yeah, there could be no other answer. It, it was survival. Is this still kind of the job shop area? It is. This is our Blue Streak facility. This is all about get us a model today, we ship a part tomorrow. Our customers named it that, we didn't. And there's a variety of machine tools in here. There's machine tools with 
<clears throat> 30 by 65 travels. And there's six 5X's trunnions in here. Of course, naturally, we also have a CNC press rate to complement the machining. Oh, yeah. So this is our quality lab, yeah. uh, positive pressure. Uh, we maintain uh, 68 to 71 degrees year round. Two CMMs, Brown and Sharp and Mitotoya, three meters is our largest one, uh, along with a, uh, a hexagon uh, measuring arm. So this is our aerospace assembly department and along with metrology. And, and we assemble our parts in here to keep everything under the same climate so there's no soak. We can actually assemble the part, come right over in here to do final measuring and right out the door with it. Um, it connects right to the shipping? Yes, shipping is right through this door here. They come in, we do anything from shrink wrap, automated shrink wrapping here to part mark. And all these parts are getting boxed paperwork associated, part numbers sprayed on, everything's getting ready to get out of here by about three o'clock today for what items are shipping today. And with uh, aerospace parts, you have to have traceability for all the parts, right? Everything, yeah, raw materials, fasteners, um, date of manufacture. A lot of times I'll walk through the facility now and I'll remember back to, to some of those younger days when we may not have had a technology that we have now or when we don't didn't have the capacity we have now and uh first of all uh, i can't never forget that we're really a blessed business because we are but i'm also very grateful uh it's humbling to walk through aerotech to see it today versus what it once was that contributes to a lot of things uh, from the employees that we have here to our customers that help support us and trust us to run their parts. I get a lot of the recognition in this because I'm the owner, but let there be no misunderstanding. This was a team effort from day one. Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here. And if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.